Problem 69. It is somewhat tedious mathematically, and ultimately physics ends as soon as you understand the free body diagram, which is right here. So, in this example, we have the object, which is a ball, completing a horizontal circle with a certain radius, which we do not know but can find, and it is held in that centripetal motion, or uniform circular motion for that matter, with two ropes and gravity. Now the thing with the two ropes, even though they make the same angle, the tension in those two ropes is different. And the question of this problem is, find the tension in each rope. The maddening mathematical part is, when you figure out your centripetal force, it's going to be exactly as the tension in one of the ropes, but it would be a mistake to call it just that. So not a single, uh, the centripetal force is not created by just one single rope. And for that matter, centripetal force is obviously, if I were to show, but remember, we cannot really show centripetal force because it's not really a force. Centripetal force is a net force. So it's the a combination of several vectors. So just to show you the semi-centripetal force, I will make a dotted line right here. So what would produce that? You will have two tensions in the rope in this case. So force of gravity actually does not make any difference because it's horizontal. I think I misspoke before, but the two components of your tensions will create that centripetal force. So it's going to be pointing inside, dotted line, not a real force. It's the combination of the two. So we're going to be talking about the x components of tension 1 and tension 2. So lurking up here, we have tension 1 plus tension 2 in x gives you centripetal force. So technically, my centripetal force here should be way longer if I added the two x components, it would be going on a lot. <coughs> and then, vertically, you have a vertical component of the second, the rope that is below the ball. That tension is pointing down, and plus mg that is straight down. Those two are counteracted by the vertical part of the upper rope. So here's what I'm saying is the tension in the vertical rope, I mean in the upper rope, the vertical part of the tension in the upper rope equals the vertical part of the second tension plus mg. Now they didn't really give us the radius, but they did give us, um, how do I do this? There. Let me try and fit everything in here. So we have 3 and 2, so let me highlight it. We have, these are both 2 meters, and here I'm showing you the triangle with 2 meters, and then our hypotenuse for each is 2, and then we just need to find this, or actually that. So the thing is, because both of these are 2 meters, and they both will be making a, the same angle with the vertical, I'll stop. So it's easy to kind of see it, and they drew a very good diagram for us to see that it's symmetrically, we have a isosceles triangle, and right smashed in the middle will be the radius. So what we are after is the radius right here, which will be the radius right here. And it's easy to figure it out because you can, you can actually, I sh I'm showing it two ways. You can either do Pythagorean theorem, hypotenuse squared minus one of the legs 
and one of the legs is one half of three, so 1.5, or you could do two sine of 41.4. Where did I get the 41.4? If I have this right here, you can do low signs of cosines if you want to incorporate this whole three if you want it. I'm just going the lazy way. I'm looking at my right triangle, and that right triangle right here has a two as a hypotenuse, one and a half as the adjacent side. So if I do inverse cosine, that will give me my 41.4 angle, and then I can turn around and use it to figure out um, the radius of the rotation. So um, ultimately, the radius of the rotation right here is. 1.32 meters. Now, going back to this, centripetal force is the sum of the horizontal components. So each of the horizontal components, if this is 41.4, and this also is 41.4 isosceles triangle, then sine of 41.4 times each force will give me the uh, component oh, right here. So then I went ahead and just calculated what sine of 41.4 is. It's 0.661 rounded. So then um, I can say that I can say T1 times 0.661 plus T2 times 0.661 equals mv squared over r. So then, R is 132. Mass of the ball is given to be 4 kilograms right here. Hence, I'm writing 4. That's mass. This is V squared. And that's the radius which we had found before. So I'm using the formula for MV squared's formula for centripetal force mv squared over r, plugged in the numbers, figured out that it was 109. And deviously, that will be tension in one of the forces, but regardless, um, 109 is centripetal force. Then rearranging this, centripetal force minus this would be equal to this. So then, if I subtract 109 minus 0.661 of T2 and divide by 0.661, I'm going to end up with T1. So this is my substitution for T1. T1 is 165 minus T2. Then I can go back to this equation and use this equation with the substitution of 165 minus in t, t2 instead of t1. And remember that ty will be through cosine because this is the y component. So what I'm doing next, I'm going for ty1 equals t12 cosine, I mean, sorry, tyy T1, T1y equals T1 cosine of 41.4. So what I do after that, cosine, remember how we found the angle? Cosine of that 41.4 is 1.5 over 2. So it's 0.75 ultimately. So now, T2y is also multiplied by cosine of 41.4, so ultimately also multiplied by 0.75. Then I have that. So this is my T1y equals T2y plus mg, because this is the top rope, and it's supporting the tension from the bottom the tension from the bottom and uh, force of gravity. So now 
instead of T1, I'm going to substitute this. The rest is tedious algebra. Yikes. So, 0.75, instead of T1, I'm writing 165 minus T2 equals, so all of this right here, oops, that is this with a substitution. Then all of this is this side. So the rest is just algebra. Then you distribute 0.75 through 165, that gives you 123.8. Multiply 0.75 times T2. Then you have twice this and this on either side with the opposite sign, so you just add them together. That's one and a half T2, so I just put this over here, grab that, put it to the left with a minus, that gives me 84.6, and then divide by one and a half, that gives you 56.4, and like I said, after that, if you subtract 56 from 165, that was right here. So, got this. Since we have this equation right there, then I can um, plug in my 56, which we just had for 56.4. When rounded, you end up with 109 newtons. So, Mathematically tedious. Physics is beautiful. That is question number 69.